Forget Netflix, I'm binge watching this guy. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I'm still a little high from when Astri Lone commented on my last style study. Am I fangirling? Yes. Am I ashamed of it? Absolutely not. First Sam Yang and then Astri Lone. I'm collecting my brushes with celebrity, like Thanos collecting the Infinity Stones. So, in the spirit of staying high and excited, today's video is about an artist who has recently blown up all over YouTube. And for the first time on this channel's history, this video was requested not by one, not by two, but by four separate people. And it is a request to study the style of Angel Ganev. So, a massive thank you to Jermaine Javier, John Rovic, Mr. Duba, and Midden Martin for requesting this video. Now, I know a bunch of you are new here, in which case, hi, new subscribers, welcome to the gang, um, we ride at dawn. But, but in case you're new to the Style Study series, let me do a quick rundown of the format of this video. I generally do my style studies in three parts. In part one, we analyze the style of Angel and see what we can learn from it. In part two, we do a study of one of Angel's original paintings. The reference I chose today was this one. And in part three, we'll apply everything that we learned today to an original painting of our own. As always, if you enjoyed this video and find it helpful, then please remember to give me a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below. But with all of that said, sit back, relax, and let's jump into another style study featuring Angel Ganev. Angel Ganev is a 24-year-old painter slash entertainer from Sofia, Bulgaria. I absolutely have a soft spot for Bulgaria because that's where my best friend is from so I'm just going to put it out there that this study is probably going to be incredibly biased. Angel actually turned 24 earlier this month so happy late birthday. According to his DeviantArt, he's been sharing his art online for about 7 years and in one of his older videos, he mentioned that he actually got into digital painting before he played with traditional art. Speaking of, his videos are so entertaining. Like, <laughs> at this point, I'm kind of just wasting my Amazon Prime video subscription. Syringe. You want some? Because I would literally rather sit here and watch Angel roast the rest of us normies and our art. <laughs> He specializes in stylized portraits and magical character art, and he recently published his very own art book called Draw with Angel, where he breaks down his process of coming up with characters, shares their backstories, and walks you through a detailed step-by-step -step of his actual painting process. His art and his incredibly riveting personality have garnered him over 225,000 YouTube subscribers and over 708,000 followers on Instagram. And now it's time to channel Arena Ariana Grande because it's time to make a vocal list. Okay. <laughs> okay, there's one more of these terrible list jokes to come this month and then you're all free. Okay, just bear with me. Okay, <laughs> here are five key characteristics of Angel's art. So, if you've been in the art community, you'll know that a lot of people see using reference as cheating. It is seen as taboo to not come up with 100% of your art by yourself. Obviously, this is nonsense, and Angel is one of those artists who knows better than to be bullied by those comments. You see, Angel has always been very open about how he uses references to both study and be inspired by. But he doesn't trace them at all. That is the real taboo and we'll table that discussion for later. No, what Angel does is take any reference and basically turn it into pop art. 
Obviously, that is a very loose understanding of his work, and we'll dive into the nuances in a second. But personally, I can't help but look at his work and be reminded of old timey pop art. The bright, saturated colors, the bold silhouettes, and the incredible readability are all a huge part of Angel's art style. And he does this by often completely changing up the color scheme from the original reference. You'll see very strong uses of complementary color schemes, which are innately pleasing to our eyes. But you'll also see big, recognizable shapes that cause the character to really stand out from the background. If you watch my lowish style study, you'll know that we dove into the importance of readability, so I won't bore you with it again. But where the background is light, the edges of the character are dark, and vice versa. In cases where the character and the background have similar values, Angel separates the two with a strong rim light. And with all of that in place, you'll find that while you can see the strong influence of a reference portrait, there is often very little resemblance to the original photo. And that, you guys, is how you use a reference and do it right. Okay, let us now get into the specifics. So obviously, Angel's character art is rather stylized, but still somehow looks realistic. This took me a moment to crack, but I think I know why. You see, there are the usual stylizing moves that make the face more aesthetically pleasing. So you have your large eyes, relatively smaller minimized nose, pouty glossy lips, and a pointy chin. As we've seen countless times, these stylistic choices work to create a more youthful, almost baby-like innocence. But looking at Angel's work, you can clearly still tell that these aren't child characters. Now, why is that? Well, if we look a little closer, we'll find that yes, the sizes of the facial features have been tinkered with, but not their positions on the face. So while the eyes are larger than what's natural, they aren't placed very low on the face. Whereas in the art of someone like Ross Tran or Loish, we've seen that they push the eyes really far down to create a larger head and hence a more juvenile appearance. Angel doesn't do that at all. Similarly, Angel positions the nose and the mouth in the same places as you would see on a regular human face, meaning that while the jaw is relatively narrower, it isn't super shortened. So while the individual features have been stylized, their positions on the face have not. And that is what creates the confusion of why, even though his portraits are obviously stylized, they still look so realistic and believable. Some other common features I found were that the characters often have long, graceful necks and slender, almost skinny bodies. The clothing is generally rather modest and there isn't any overt sexualization at all. While the character's hair generally does frame the face, it is often rendered to be relatively understated, unless of course the hair is a huge part of the storyline. If he wants to emphasize the hair, Angel paints it to have strong value shifts and contrast. And vice versa, if the hair isn't a focal point of the story, he renders it to be relatively low contrast. All in all, the facial proportions are in fact stylized, but their positions on the face are unaltered, creating a semi-realistic look. Alright, so this is my favorite part of Angel's work. It is that extremely saturated pop of color via a back or rim light. A lot of his portraits have relatively muted ambient lights and shadow, but then you have this, this crazy bright secondary light source that casts almost a stripe of color on the edge of the character's silhouette. Now, I initially thought this was similar to the neon glow effect as we saw in the lowish cell study, but actually this is very different. For one thing, this isn't a glow, it is a cast light. In other words, the characters themselves aren't the source of the saturated light, except here, but this is an anomaly, but rather they are reflecting an external light source. In terms of rendering, this means that you'll see the bright color on the characters themselves, but not a glowy aura created by the character. 
And secondly, a neon glow effect often has high saturation edges with a bright white center. But here, while you do see a very slight color variation in the rim light, it is often just two values, a high saturated color at the edges and an even higher saturated, very slightly paler tone in the middle. There isn't a straight up white in the middle, meaning that the character's skin and hair isn't quite a neon light source, as much as it is possibly a reflection of what might very well be an external neon light source. Sometimes you'll even see two separate, high saturated secondary lights, often in complementary colors. While these are absolutely amazing at adding color to an otherwise muted painting, if you remember the last style study we did on Astri Loan, you'll know that these secondary light sources are also an excellent storytelling component. The more light sources you have, the easier it is to sell the believability and the realism of a piece. Alright, if you've watched me paint at all, you'll know that I'm guilty of rendering entire backgrounds and then applying a blurry filter and smudging it all to push the perspective. But when we look at Angel's work, we see that he actually hand paints the entire background as is. So even when he's going for a blurry, unfocused effect in the background, you'll see that he actually hand paints the blurriness. If there's abstract textures in the background, he hand paints the textures. Because when you zoom in, you see that instead of a jumble of pixels, there are actual brush strokes in the background elements. His style of painting background is very expressionistic in that he doesn't aim for a crazy amount of realism, choosing instead to apply a lot of artistic license. Although most of his backgrounds are very abstract, you'll find some natural elements such as flowers and leaves and trees. Another key element in his backgrounds are the bright splashes of light. A lot of the times, these are the source of that high saturation cast rim light on the character. But as with all other elements, Angel also hand paints this light. Will I ever achieve this level of patience? We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> Okay, so like I said before, Angel isn't shy with using textured brushes or visible brush strokes in his work. While most stylistic character artists tend to keep the character's face and skin very flawless and smooth, looking closer at Angel's work, I realized that he actually uses strategically placed texture to create subtle plane shifts in the skin. So you'll notice the obvious texture in the hard plane shift, which is in the corners of the eyes, the nose, the mouth, as well as around the jaw area. But looking even closer, you'll see subtle textures on the cheeks, the chin and the forehead, all of which are generally rendered to be rather flat in most other stylistic paintings. Instead, Angel uses very small value shifts to indicate the difference between the skin of the cheek under the eye versus the skin around the nose or the forehead skin by the hairline versus the temples versus the skin in between the eyebrows. He also shifts the hues very slightly between the top, middle and bottom of the face. But because the variation is so subtle, we tend to almost not see them. But just like with the multiple light sources, having these subtle hue and value shifts across the skin further help to sell the realism. The devil is always in the details. Or in this case, the angel. Okay, that was funny, you have to give me that one. <laughs> so, to quickly sum up, here are the five main characteristics of Angel's work. Number one, he uses references in the right way to inform the pose and dimensions, but completely changes up the lighting setup and color schemes to create completely original work. Two, while the individual proportions are stylized, their positions on the face are very close to the natural human face, creating a semi-realistic feel to these portraits. Number three, he adds a pop of highly saturated secondary back or rim light to further drive the silhouette and realism while adding a wash of color to an otherwise muted scene. Number four, Angel hand paints all the background elements, prioritizing painterly strokes and expressionism over realistic blending. 
And number five, he places textures very strategically to indicate the bold and subtle plane shifts, adding a lot of dimension to the skin and hair. For part two, I actually decided it would be fun to test drive Angel's own brush set that he gives away for free. When I first came across his art on Instagram a couple months ago, I genuinely thought he worked on Procreate, given all the textures in there. But when I realized that A, he uses Photoshop, and B, he's got this brush set on there for free, I obviously cried tears of joy and relief, so I grabbed a copy of the ABR file and here you can see me do a quick test run of them. This is actually how I test run any brush set. The set also comes with actions and gradients and a hotkey file, all of which I will test later on, but for the purpose of this video we're just going to look at the brushes and maybe the actions a little later on. Personally, what I look for in a good brush is whether it works well with the angle and shape jitter, so it's not just stamping the same shape over and over again. And when I find brushes that I absolutely love, and I know I don't have similar ones in my own set already, those are the ones that actually make it to my permanent collection. I ended up adding over 30 brushes from his set into my permanent set, and if you're looking for a comprehensive Photoshop brush kit, I highly recommend this one. I'll leave a link to it in the description. So anyway, the reference I chose for this study today is this one. It is called Self Lust, and honestly, isn't that just a big mood? <laughs> this one was actually a fairly quick study because like we've seen, the features are all in the right place, just slightly exaggerated or minimized. That made the initial sketching phase a little more straightforward for me, and then the challenge really began. Now generally, I tend to start by placing the highest value spots on the skin using a bright orange and then color adjusting that to resemble a normal highlight shade and then move on to rendering and blending everything out. But here, because of the very sharp edges of the brush strokes, I decided to go right in with a hard brush and place all of the tones, highlights, midtones and shadows in no particular order. Obviously, this would be really difficult to do without a reference, but I felt that going in with a hard, high opacity brush really prevented me from overblending, thus helping to preserve those subtler, hard edges. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I did struggle a little bit with getting the exact colors and the contrast right. It could be that Angel has some witchcraft going with his work, where it is impossible to determine the exact color palette he used, or maybe I've just got tunnel vision and weary eyes from doing so many style studies in a month. <laughs> in either case, yes, I see that the colors are slightly different, particularly in the highlights, but I'm gonna chalk that up to unforced errors. Towards the end of this piece, I actually ran some of the Photoshop action sequences that came with the brush pack, and they're actually pretty nifty. I specifically used it to create that grain that you see in his illustrations, and it actually worked a treat. So here's the study I ended up with. Easy on the initial sketch, surprisingly taxing in the rendering phase. So for the original painting today, I was heavily inspired by Angel's background lights and that bokeh effect. Yes, I looked up how to say bokeh. Yes, you can call me a nerd for that. I don't care. <laughs> I actually scripted that joke in and it is fantastic. Okay. <laughs> And as much as I wanted to hand paint a complicated background, there were several bad attempts involved. So at this point, I just went the custom brush route. 
But this also gives me an excuse to show you some of the cool bokeh brushes that came in Angel's brush pack. Those were really fun to play with. So here's the finished painting. I really love the glow effect and again you'll see me run that grain action to finish this baby off at the end. As always this painting is available as downloads, printables and wallpapers over on my Patreon, link is in the description. But yeah, here's the finished piece. And there we have it, Angel Ganev Demystified. I hope you've enjoyed it as always, and if you have, then please remember to give me a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below. Thank you so much for 700 subscribers. I am completely floored by the response to this series, and I'm so glad you guys are enjoying these videos so, so much. Massive thanks again to Jermaine Javier, John Rovig, Mr. Doomba and Midden Martin for requesting this video. I hope you guys enjoy it and find it helpful. Um, and if you have any other artists that you'd like me to cover on this series, then leave them in a comment below. As you can tell, I do make these happen. If you haven't watched this series before, I'll leave the rest of the style studies in a playlist up here. They're all really good and have had amazing responses and people have loved them and found them so helpful. So I highly recommend and checking out that playlist up there but with all of that said thank you so much for hanging out with me today i hope you've enjoyed it as much as i have and i'll see you guys on the next one bye